So let's jump into the 90 kilo weight class here. We got a lot of talented players in this division and I think we're gonna see some upsets. So let's jump in here to pool A and see what we got. So we're gonna break this off into sections just like we have in the other divisions. So we have pool A is broken up into two sections and we wanna look at who's getting through to the quarterfinals here. Now, there is one guy that can really upset the number one, and it's Marcus Nyman of Sweden. Um, he has the ability, he's been a European champion before, he can upset him, but when it comes down to it, the way I see it is this. His confidence level is just through the roof, and I don't think anybody can touch it. It's just, it's the way it is. Right, when you're confident as a as an athlete, like it speaks highly. But I do think we're gonna get that going right there. Let's move him over into the next bracket. And I think that's how we're gonna see the top half play out. Let's go to the next one. So this, this quarter is actually tougher than I think a lot of people give it credit for. Um, just because you have the Kazakhstani here that can be a challenge for a lot of people. The Brazilian, Maciado, he can do a lot of damage, right? He was a junior world champ, I believe, at 81 kilos or a bronze medalist uh, years ago, though. Um, he's a little older now, and he hasn't quite broken into the 90 kilo bracket, but he does have the judo for it. Um, and then the other player right here is the Azerbaijani, who has beaten a lot of the top players in the past. So this pool is a little bit more challenging to figure out who's gonna get to that quarter. I think when it comes down to it, the people we see win these three matches, whoever comes out of these three is gonna end up fighting the Russian all the way over. Um, but I'm not sure who's gonna win it. The question is, is, is the Russian right here good enough to beat all three of these players so it doesn't affect who ends up over here in the quarterfinals? And, I'm not 100% sure. I definitely think the Russian has beaten the Brazilian. I'm not so sure the Russian has beaten the Azerbaijani. Um, just because he has the seed, I am gonna go Russia. Russia because he has the seed and I'm gonna go the Azerbaijani here and I think I'm gonna put the Kazakhstani there. Um, it, it's really tough to say who's going to pull this out, you know, when we're looking at this, this part of the bracket, but the one thing the Russian has going for him is he's younger, um, and he's on the up. Okay. So he's improving with every event that he goes to. So I think we're just going to end up seeing that quarterfinal happen. Um, if we see that quarterfinal happen, I definitely think we're gonna see the Spanish guy pull it out here. He's just, he just won the Worlds. Granted, it was a weaker World Championships because not everybody was there. But again, he still won it, he's won it before. Um, I just think he's, he's ready to be into an Olympic final, but there are some players down here that I think can upset him. So again, we're breaking this up into different sections and different quarters. So. We have this top piece right here and this bottom piece. And when I'm looking at this, a lot of these players, we're gonna talk about this bottom one here, right? These guys are all pretty much in the same level, right? This is actually a really good um, pool where we're, we're not, I'm not sure who's gonna come out. I know the Uzbekistani is seated, but he could easily lose to either of these guys. Um, it's tough to say, but I think if I have to, I have to make choices, right? We gotta, we gotta fill this out. I think what we're gonna see is Uzbekistan versus Ukraine, and then we'll see Uzbekistan pull it out here in the final. Let me back that up. There we go. And I think we're going to see that. That's just gut instinct. You know, he's seated. He's going into it. He has the advantage. But it's still a very competitive half of Pool B. Now, up here, 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it right off the rip. I'm gonna do this. I just I think he's one of the more talented players in the division. He's young, he's hungry, and he looks to win. He's taken no prisoners. He has a good shot at going all the way in this bracket. Just like that. And I think right here, I'm going to give it to the Israeli. He wins that. I think really easy. Uh, he'll be in control of that entire matchup right here. Just like that. And so up here, we have the semifinal of the number one versus the number four. Um, both guys are super, super talented. It's really hard to say who's going to pull this off at the end of the day. Um, I, I don't know if there's a lot of matchups between these two on the IJF circuit. I probably should have done a little bit more research before doing this just to see. But if I'm going off my gut instinct... Um, I'm going to go youthfulness. I'm going to go youthfulness. I just sometimes when athletes have really, really big wins, right? Like he just won the world. Now, granted, it wasn't a full stack division like it is here at the games because some people stayed home. At the end of the day, when you have a big win, sometimes it's hard to not have a downturn after a big win. It's hard to win something really important and then just continue to win without a break. And because the World Championships was so close to this event, I just think it gives the Georgian just a slight edge going into this matchup. So let's jump down here into Pool C, where we have the seeded player, Van Tien, and the Cuban, Morales. Um, I do think that these two players are better than everybody else in the in the bracket. There's nobody that was thrown in here that does create a problem other than Clarget here of France. He has a lot of experience. He fights on the ground. Um, he's World Masters champion. So he could potentially find his way out of here. Um, but I do think the way this this plays out is we're going to see the oops let's change that color up we're going to see the french player advance we're going to see silva morales advance we're going to see colton brown advance from the united states and then the question just becomes right here so i'm going to leave it there because this is a tough match there is no question about it 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 could potentially go either way neither one of these players is going oh I'm so glad I drew that guy because this is easy for me. Um, and then Cuba is definitely advancing here. Um, so when we're looking at the Netherlands, France, I would love to see the head to head here to see what's happened in the past. Um, Van Tien has been on a roll, but again, COVID plays such a role at this Olympic games because you don't know who's training. And there is a difference when we're talking about uh, being in shape in the dojo where you're feeling on point but then you step onto that competition mat and anxiety sets in you haven't been there there's like competition shape and then there's dojo shape and competition shape is really going to play a factor into this because the french player here is a workhorse like He's on you the entire match. He transitions, loves Sankaku. It's one of his favorite moves. I could easily see him pressuring the Dutch player into making a mistake and capitalizing on it. With that being said, because the French player is so aggressive with the gripping and on him, the Dutch player does do a lot of drop sodes, attacks off the grips, things of that nature, especially when people are barreling down on him. So after having said that, I think... One of the things we have to do is we just have to give the Dutch player the advantage um, in that position. So I'm not sure who's won more matches. Again, Cuba versus the Netherlands here. It's a tough call. I'm just going to let it sit there for a second. And let's, let's jump down here into Pool D where 
we have, let's break this up again into different sections because they're important to talk about on their own because for this bracket, we have a couple of important people to just kind of mention. We have Mukai here from Japan who has medaled at the world level. He's medaled at the Grand Slam level. And then the other person that's really important to pay attention to is Guac from Korea. Both of these players could be medal contenders if you put them in a seated position and shuffle the division around. Um, but they are going into this bracket unseated, so it does change things. But I think it makes for an easy choice to do this and do that. And then we'll go here and then we're gonna put guac and we're gonna see this for a quarter. And once we get these guys into the quarterfinals here, um, now, we're, now we're questioning like what's gonna happen and I understand that the Hungarian is number three, but I think stylistically, the Japanese player is gonna be too much for him. So I'm gonna put Japan all the way up into that quarterfinal, or into the semifinal here. Quarterfinal, quarterfinal. A lot of people in this division. Um, and now this, this is a tough matchup. Guac, you know, he was on the up around 2016, but since then I feel like he's not the player he used to be. But then again, he's only going up against the number six. So he could pull this out. Um, it's not unheard of, you know, Majidov does have some unorthodox throws that could catch the Korean in this predicament. But I'm not 100% sure what's gonna happen. So. But we got to make a choice. Um, it is what it is. Who are we going to put here? Who's moving on to the rep charge? Um, I think I'm just going to do it. I'm going to say the seeds are going to lose down here. I might be wrong, but seeds are losing. So. This is what we got here. We have Netherlands versus Cuba, Japan versus Korea. Who's going to the semifinals? Two versus seven, and the two unseated players, but are clearly top players in the world, um, are also in the quarterfinal. Netherlands versus Cuba. What happens? It's an interesting matchup. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the edge to the Dutch boy, um, and then down here I'm gonna give the edge to. The Japanese player. I don't think this Japanese player is really all that talented. I think the matchups are just working in his favor. If we threw him up into these brackets up here with the Georgian or with uh, the Spanish boy, I think you knock him out of the tournament easily. Um, but because he's down here in this bracket, you know, he just had the draw that gets him further in the tournament. In my in my opinion. And now we're here. And so just looking at this going into it, I honestly, I'm gonna put the Dutch guy in the final. And then I have the Georgian in the final up here already. And that's gonna be our final matchup. And now we have to pick who's gonna win it. The Georgian or the Dutch boy looking at the bracket. That is really, really tough to say. Um, both guys are extremely talented. Um, ah, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, I kind of want to pull it down and over just because of his aggressiveness, but I think that could get him into trouble um, at this stage. So I think what I want to do is I want to pull. Hmm. This is interesting because I feel like if the Georgians beat the number one guy in the world, he's going into this final like feeling unbeatable, which is going to give him an edge. 
but I do think stylistically the Dutch guy has the advantage in the situation. The way they grip, the throws that they do, um, it gives him that advantage. But man, when you're feeling on top of the world, it gives you an edge. Um, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna pull the Dutch guy up for stylistically. I think I think he's gonna come out on top. Looking at the way the bracket came together. So let's pencil these guys in down here. And now let's fill this out. So right here we have the loser of the semi is Japan. And then up here we have Spain. And then for the loser here, we have Korea, Cuba, and then Uzbekistan and Russia. Okay, so Here's what we got for the rapid charge. We have Russia versus Uzbekistan and Cuba versus Korea. I think I can make these choices fairly easy. Um, let's go Russia and Cuba. But once I've done that, I think the next choices, just the way they sit, are also fairly easy because I think the Spanish boy's coming out ahead there. I just, I don't even think they're close in matchups. Um, uh, the Spanish guy is just on a slightly higher level. I think he would have to make a really big mistake to lose that match. Um, here, though, it's a little bit closer of a match. Um, and I think looking at this, I'm tempted to put the Russian through just because... I feel like he's a better judo player. The Japanese guys, he has an extremely solid foundation, but I just, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna say Japan's not meddling at 90 kilos. As crazy as that sounds, um, I'm gonna do that. He's out. There we go, so that's my bracket. For the 90 kilos, we have Netherlands winning it with Georgia coming in second, Russia, then Spain taking the bronzes.